For centuries, alchemists have tried to turn base metals into gold. Chemistry, as their science came to be known, did indeed bring them gold, but not in the way they were hoping. In Europe, industrial chemistry was born with textiles. In order to dye fabrics, mills would use products that were based in particular on sulfuric acid. In 1778, Johann Sebastian Clay co-founded a workshop in Winterthur, Canton Zurich, that produced oil of vitriol, later known as sulfuric acid. Swiss chemistry had been born. The branch would grow and prosper throughout the 19th century, mainly producing dyes. Basel saw the birth of Sieber, Geige and Sondel, whose successive mergers would result a century later in the pharmaceutical giant Novartis. Basel had all the ingredients for becoming a chemical capital. The textile industry was there and in neighbouring Alsace. Raw materials could arrive easily by train, and two raw materials, chlorine and soda, were available locally from the Schweizer Halle salt works. Also, it was easy to get rid of waste, simply throw it into the Rhine. At the time, the environment wasn't exactly high on people's priorities. At the turn of the 20th century, the Swiss chemical industry had already started diversifying into pharmaceuticals. After the First World War, it benefited from weakened German competition to tackle plastics, fertilizers and pesticides. Chemistry thrived on research from its own laboratories, such as those at the higher education colleges. A chemistry department has existed at the Federal Institute of Technology in Zurich since 1855. It received its first Nobel Prize in 1913, awarded to Alfred Werner. In 1937, his student, Paul Carre, also became a Nobel Prize winner for his work on vitamins at Hoffman La Roche, today simply Roche. Two years later, it was the turn of Leopold Rutzika at Zurich Polytechnic, rewarded for his services to the perfume industry and its leader, Givaudon. In 1950, Tadeusz Reichstein received the Nobel Prize in Medicine, but it's in chemistry that his name lives on, the principal industrial process for the artificial synthesis of vitamin C, perfected before the Second World War and still used today. In 1975, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry travels to Zurich, thanks to Vladimir Prelog, Leopold Rutzika's successor. However, these success stories have their less glorious counterparts, the darker side of chemistry. During the Nazi period, the Basel pharmaceutical giants produced dyes and medicines in Germany, and like other factories, made use of slave labor. Although Swiss chemist Paul Hermann Müller received a Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1948 for the discovery of the insecticidal properties of DDT, in the 1970s and 1980s, agricultural use was banned in most developed countries. Then there were the disasters. Cerveso, Bhopal, Schweizer Halle, AZF. Chemistry was no longer the laboratory of beneficial wonders, but a witch's cauldron. At the same time, the Basel region discovered its toxic rubbish dumps and the tens of thousands of tons of dangerous substances stashed away in them. Looking to the future, chemistry is going to have to turn green. Since the 1990s, labs have endeavoured to work without dangerous substances and to use less energy and fewer rare raw materials. Chemistry remains central to our lives, which is responsible for most of what we use, eat and drink, not to mention all our medicines. In the future, these medicines will focus on the parts of the body that need them. Fabrics will be able to clean themselves, and cars, dented after a crash, will smooth themselves out. Bridges and buildings will know when to sound the alarm when cracks appear. And let's not forget everything scientists have yet to even think of. <laughs>